Trials dark on every hand And we cannot understand All the ways that God had led us To that blessed promised land But He'll guide us with His eye And we'll follow till we die We will understand it better by and by Let's sing together By and by When the morning comes When the saints of God are got at home We will tell the story How we overcome We will understand it better by and by Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, she taught me that song and I performed it. That was the first stage performance. And from there, this man is here. 1980. Mm. In 1980, my dad was transferred to Indonesia. And there we lived at a place called Mpo. I joined the St. Mark's Anglican Church Choir in 1987 under one Mr. Obele and Mr. D.S.D. Honor as my choir masters. Um, Ibukwe is now late, but D.S.D. would have been here. Something happened and he couldn't make it. Luckily, it was a music festival or competition year, so a Belfast trained professional who was fresh with his doctorate from the Queen's University was invited to coach us. That was how he discovered me and began to mentor me, monitor my growth musically. And um, that's the person you know today as Professor Dan Sisiago. That was where he picked me from. Later at the Dennis Memorial Grammar School, um, I was further trained and guided by another UK trained singer, musicologist, Lady Dr. Ngozi Okonkwo. I don't know why she's not here. Bikopuluna Otoma. Professor Dan, I go Bikopuluna Otoma. Makandi Amaro, if I'm a logic. Professor Dan, this is Agosta. Bikopuluna Otoma. Aha. Thank you, Ma. Thank you, sir. These two wonderful people made me. They actually nurtured me, trained me musically, and guided me. And they're still guiding me. They're still there. Um, before I was 12 years, I wrote my first composition, which is titled Nyanu Jehovah Unu Muchineke. I couldn't find that score. I looked for it. I couldn't get it. I wanted to show you because I still have some of these songs in the writing. I wrote them, the exact scripts I used. And later, around 1993, I wrote the Anglican Students Association anthem. That is the anthem they still use to date. That's the way it is. I wrote it that way. That's the exact script. It's even in the blue pen I used to write it. And I made sure I you know, fixed my picture there so that have several years to come, they will still know that this small boy wrote that song. While at the University of Nigeria, I developed further in music composition under then Mr. Chris Onyech. He is now Professor Onyech. Has he left? Oh, God. He was here. Um, theory of music I learned much under Dr. A.K. Chinifu, this time again under Dr. Dan Nago, then, and Mr. Dogu, who is now a professor. General Musical Arts Performance, I was guided by Dr. Dan Nago in choral music and uh, Mr. Joe Onerkwell in opera. Mr. Dr. Joe Onerkwell would have been here today, but we lost him last week. Unfortunately, yeah. Um, Major McDonald taught me band music, just to mention but a few. The efforts of these great lecturers and others, too numerous to mention, led to what I am today and has qualified me to stand before you today 
as your inaugural lecturer. To God be the glory. The topic of today's lecture is positioning I will add music for global relevance in the 21st century. It is my hope that by the time we get to the end of this lecture, everyone would have something tangible to return home with. Therefore, I'll make effort not to be too jargonistic in my delivery so as to be informative and able to carry everybody along, irrespective of one's um, musical background. Let me start by, we know who the Igbo people are. We are of the southeastern Nigeria, made up of five states, Abia, Anambra, Enugu, Ebony, Imo. Um, Igbos are mainly agriculturists and entrepreneurs who are so naturally gifted in crafts and arts, musical arts inclusive. The lifestyle is most times community-centered. Music in Igbo land usually is a social event. What is music? A lot of authors, scholars have described music, tried to define it in several ways. Um, they maintain that it is an integral part of culture which accompanies every average Nigerian in one way or the other, from womb to tomb, cradle to grave, birth to death, infancy to death, and all that. Each of these expressions points to the fact that music lives in and with the Igbo people such that Igbo culture cannot be discussed without mentioning the music of the Igbo people. On the other hand, music is the most widely practiced and most accessible of all arts, but it lacks a definite, universally satisfactory and acceptable definition. It has been defined as a universal language, concord of sweet sounds, and so on. But there are three definitions that suggest some level of human involvement in the creation of music. One is the one by blocking that it is humanly organized sound. This means that it is deliberately produced and as opposed to other natural or artificial sounds. The other is a system of expression which uses sound, rhythm, and time. That is by Oka for 1988. This also suggests a deliberate action by an individual who needs to express himself or herself. The third one is creative rationalization of intangible sonic stimulations, which attain tangible as which attain tangibility as structured configurations that engineer spirit times and it affects various individuals differently and communicates differently to different people. Let, let's take, for instance, if we move away from here, okay, if two persons are living in a, a place and they move out, say, two students living in a hostel, and they move out in the morning, on getting to school, one of them receives an alert of, say, 200,000. That student, ordinarily, most times, would, most of you, the students, if such a thing happens, will leave school for that day and go back home. On getting home, maybe you decide to enjoy yourself, feel happy. You go down there and, you know, put on your sound system, and maybe play something like, um, I don't get a lot, God win. Uh, and you're dancing and enjoying yourself. Loud music. The other student who is ignorant of this thing that happened, stepping in at that point of that loud music, would react differently. Having been, you know, having gone through all the troubles of that day, uh, the you know, harsh weather and all that, you will want to get back home and relax. On getting home and you're hearing this loud music and everything, your reaction will be different. You won't come in there and start dancing, I don't get that loud. Did you get any? Uh -huh. So getting at that point, the first thing you will experience will be a reaction like Orgeni What's nonsense is this. 
Meanwhile, we are talking about music at this point. Music is playing, and you're stepping in to hear music, and you're saying, what nonsense. At that point, your definition of music might not be that sonorous music everybody talks about. So that's why I looked at it and said, your definition is dependent on conception, what a lot of things, a lot of factors will determine what definition you will give music at any point in time. Music in today's society, Igbo society, is so numerous that there's enough music to suit and satisfy the basic musical needs and demands of Igbo people in their various communities at every given point in time. Research identifies three classes of music in the 21st century Igbo society. One is the traditional Igbo music, the second is the Igbo popular music, and the third is the Igbo art music, which is an uh, area of concentration. Now, the traditional Igbo music, I'll have to rush this once and get to where we need to concentrate. Igbo traditional music conceived as all indigenous, thank you. I beg on 30 minutes. Hmm? I beg on 30 minutes. Thank you. All right, thank you. Traditional Igbo music conceived as all indigenous and all folk music in Nigeria that serve as media for the expression of the people's culture orally transmitted from generation to another with allowances for each generation to make selections and variations from the original without destroying its tone of continuity. It thrives more in rural areas um, where the traditional societies provide avenues for such through festivals, rituals, rites, work, recreation, and the rest of them. In the urban communities, traditional music features and festival of arts, rallies, government functions, and so on. In culture, traditional music does not only serve entertainment purposes, it educates, it informs, it addresses issues, it corrects impressions, and does a whole lot of things. A typical musical life stages of an average Igbo can be represented with what I represent as the three E's. I represent them with the three E's. Where E1 stands for entrance and early life stage, E2 stands for existence and adulthood stage, and E3 stands for exit and funeral rite stage. The E1, entrance and early life stage, that covers birth announcements, songs of circumcision, song, okay, by the time you now get to E3, is at the point of exit. At that point, you are gone, or we are gone. Uh -huh. And E3, the music of E3 is not being performed by you. It is being performed by others for you at that E3. So these are the three stages. Then the popular music that, according to Oka for 209, is a contemporaneous music which appeals to a mass audience it does not require guided listening because people are familiar with the idioms and are therefore quite receptive to it. Um, are therefore quite receptive to it. Um, Okafor at some point explained that popular music is music with broad intermediate. Oh, let me get it here before, okay broad, intermediate, and implicit transcend appeal. It is also social entertainment and dance oriented, draws its core uh, clientele from urban, urban dwellers. It finds expression mostly in pubs and nightclubs. It is more the rest of them. Then those that reflect interaction between Igbo and foreign musical cultures, Igbo high life, Igbo hip hop, and Afro pop, you know their names. Exponents of this category of music are too numerous to mention, but we have Osadebe, Oliver the Coke, Bright Chimese, P Square, Flavor, Fino, all the rest of them. Issue of concern to me in recent times is the moral justification of most lyrical contents that dwell more on sexual 
and drug related issues. This raises question on relevance of these songs we listen to. The Igbo art music. Art music is defined as those musical compositions that trained musicians produce under the influence of their Western musical training. Uh, this is the trust of our discussion. Now, according to Guamara 209, semi formal art music making and training in Igbo land can be traced to have started many years ago in the church through the CMS that brought Christianity into Igbo land around 1857. In those days, music was the only form of art music. Church music was the only art of, only form of art music that was in existence, with the church as the only patron of the art. Other forms of art music were not known to have been in existence before that time. Ago pointed out in 2002 that Igbo art music came under experimentation from early 1930s and gained prominence in the Anglican communion of Niger diocese in early 1940s. He noted that the pioneers of this music genre were music enthusiasts endowed with appreciable musical talents who, apart from church music exposure, were not matured in Western music concepts. During the early period, composers are church choir masters who started by translating English songs to Igbo and later graduated to writing their own songs. As a result of the dominance of church music, the misconception of perceiving art music as nothing more or less than church music bounds. This calls for attention of all art music practitioners and stakeholders. From its inception, Mwamara informs that about two generations of Igbo um, composers are traceable. And these are what I have referred to as ancient generation, that's AG, and modern generation MG. Among the, okay, those of the ancient generation were those talented, committed, and hardworking men and women who had no musical training as such apart from what they learned in school and in teacher training colleges with their success depending to a large extent on their interest in music. The fact, notwithstanding that they, um, the discussion of the belief that Igbo native heirs and um, the traditional reading and instruments had some pagan um, connotations. Some of them include Nelson Okoli, Daniel Ojuku, Ishmael Wang, and Reverend, plenty of them up to Reverend David Okongu and others. The modern generation emerged as a result of the establishment of the Department of Music in Nigerian institutions of higher learning, starting with UNN in 1960. With this high level of formal music training and education, they did not only improve on what their predecessors did, they developed original Igbo art music compositions that derived immensely from both the Igbo compositional idioms and the Western harmonic principles and techniques. They took care of the shortcomings of the music of the ancient group, the ancient generation, in the process of creating their own music and consequently took Igbo art music and art music generally to a higher level. These include making Zewi, Joshua, Zigwe, Felix, Muba, Okechuku, Ndubisi, Samojuku, Dana, Golaze, Kweme, Mokolobiago, and all the names you have listed here, down to us, myself, Chuku, Diezo, Koli, Judun, Nambena, Boju, Dumangwa, Tochuku, Mone, Keche, Yobicha, Kutochku, Nzelo, Chukwe, Buko, Koli, Emmanuel, Ezurum, and the rest of them. There are, we have Igbo art music in global arena. We have a lot of challenges with Igbo art music when you bring them to the global stage. They range from identity and authenticity to standardization and acceptance. People have argued whether there can be authentic core Igbo Nigerian art music theory, and that has been a serious issue of concern to many. As a composer, theorist, and performer of Igbo art music, my answer to this question has remained in the affirmative. 
owing to my Igbo background and training in African music through a traditional Igbo music perspective. The major issue facing the theoretical basis of Igbo arts music is absence of fully developed core subject area dedicated to Igbo arts music, Igbo Nigerian now, in most of our institutions, thereby creating a debt of literature on Igbo or Nigerian art music, its theory, and its theory, despite all the rich and qualitative compositions of our people that have been int um, internationally acknowledged. Music theory is, um, in a, poor, a pure Igbo sense, has suffered a lot of criticisms and has not been given proper global recognition. If a type or kind of music can truly be termed Igbo in practice, there is therefore a tendency of having a complementary and professional theoretical counterpart to its practice. Sadly, some scholars do not seem to accept, accept this as a necessity not to talk of being a realizable endeavor. To some, it is a mission impossible, while some are scared of global criticism emanating from those that has talked to the European standards of music theory and practice, and therefore do not believe that there can ever be a Nigerian Igbo fashion, and this is rather pathetic. However, some Igbo scholars have distinguished themselves in attempting to bring to fore some Igbo authentic and deeply propounded theories of Igbo art music. Scholars like Bacon Zewe, Richard Oka, Fada Anako, so Joshua Ozigwe, Christian Onyeji, Onye Wamba, Kata Onwekwe, Sam Chukwa, Vaniko Kumabra, and others have done this. Those Igbo musicologists have in one way or the other, these Igbo musicologists I mentioned above, come up with one or more purely indigenous Igbo concepts or concepts that have been striving to uphold them, and they've been striving to uphold them towards achieving global recognition. Um, some have propounded Igbo-based theories, ideologies, and concepts, and have explored to an extent what I have expressed as thinking globally and acting locally, as it pertains, pertains to Igbo art music um, theory. It calls for bridging the gaps of inadequacies in conventional indigenous theoretical terminologies by acting locally and urgently too. This is what I have chosen to refer to as ebonization, which I'm going to throw more light on as we proceed. The concept of ebonization. The need to make or create and theorize Igbo art music that is truly Igbo with a global recognition is obvious. Hence the need for ebonization. This is this concept is linked to what to that of nationalism. As they both create a sense of consciousness and the interest of the people in question. Whereas nationalism claims priority over other nations, urbanization in this sense seeks, to, seeks for conscious systematic development of indigenous Igbo musical idioms, concepts, and theories for global recognition with a view to achieving competitiveness between them and those of other nations of the world. In a bid to achieve this through systematic studies, appear to suggested compositional models that promote better inclusion of traditional African Igbo elements and idioms. Uncountable number of Igbo art compositions from Igbo composers have emerged in recent times, and they are all over the internet across the globe. Yet, not many of these composers are concerned about the state of Igbo art music literature and theory. Therefore, the Ibonization concept aims at bringing the attention of Igbo art music scholars, composers, and performers to the realization of a debt of through Igbo-based music theories, concepts, and idioms that are capable of telling the true story of the Igbo art music in the global space. Still on the Ibonization concept. As a prelude to a theoretical approach of African, Nigerian, or Igbo music, um, Agu 1999 captured in his form analysis of African music the techniques of identifying various forms of our indigenous vocal and instrumental music with the analysis of the thematic, structural designs, and contents towards creating basis for Igbo art music. 
promoting source, source, sourcing for traditional Nigerian Igbo music raw materials for modern art music. Omibio Obidike advocates for improved actualization of African musical resources and African identity in the new African art. She notes that it is not enough to merely use traditional themes for incorporating African rhythmic and melodic structures test continental identity. He or she needs to have He or she needs to have a true and practical understanding of indigenous knowledge theory and principles. The post-colonial African classroom should therefore derive its principal structure and content from Africa's traditional musical heritage. Sam C looked at some kind of some sort of classification of Igbo. Um, musical instruments in his own way and came out with five classifications. Onwe Kwe, Champion Des the West Figured, Organography, um, Organography Composite Notational System, that's called Evocons. Onyeji came up with what he called Nsoka Choral School, NSC, with a lot of things and landed on three major drums or styles. Um, research composition, drumistic piano, and African vocalism. In another development, we at the Anim came up with some um, trying to have terminologies. You know that in music, the terminologies we use are usually uh, foreign terminologies. We don't use our own terminologies to describe music. So we decided to come up with something that is Nigerian. Okafor looked at study of Igbo folk songs. In all these, the ideas, ideologies, concepts, and theories promoted above are geared towards the Ibonization project from various points of view. In my view, this requires more attention from scholars and very dedicated and conscious effort for better outcome and more positive advancement. Now, the global relevance, which is the main issue we are here to discuss. In research, research is supposed to be purpose driven, without which it is considered a mere academic exercise of. Relevant Igbo art music refers to. Relevant Igbo art music refers to those Igbo art music compositions purposely crafted for specific purposes with certain degree of usefulness in society. In such a situation, its global relevance becomes achievable with accurate marketing strategies put in place. Compositions, composing such pieces requires more than mere talent and interest. It extends to proper training under great masters and some practical experiences to guide one for the challenges of attaining such feats. This does not cancel the fact that a composition can, by an amateur composer, can excel by chance and become globally recognized. But without adequate further guidance and training, such compositions end up they hardly make a second global appearance after the first. There are specific and essential, essential considerations the creation of Igbo art music to qualify as an authentic art piece. Some of them include language, form, style, idiom, content, structure, theory, purpose, audience, and aesthetics. In vocal art music, let me skip all these and get to another, where we have the problem, where the lacuna is. By that I mean where there's a gap. Notational system, we lack notational system that can actually tell us a story that can, you know, cover all the musical tones 
that we deal with as Igbo people. Theory and practice, this is much, there is much inclination to Western theory and practice in the creation of Igbo art music. Therefore, we need to reorientate, reorientate our minds and musical sensibility towards being more Igbo in essence than Western. Idiom and style, there is lack of strong Igbo musical idioms and indigenously sourced styles in our art music compositions. Recharge and use the outer tones to actually make sense. Or you establish your, your statement. The theme of the song can be established in consonance with the tonal uh, inflections. And then when you continue, you can now mix it up, try to you know, explore other things. Instrumentation or orchestration. Igbo musical instruments in their various classifications lack proper using and incorporation in Igbo art music. They are usually not considered in vocal music. The choir masters here and the music directors here, you'll agree with me that most of the songs we write, we just write our songs without giving room to orchestration, instrumentation, trying to write out what the instrument should play. We just write the songs and then leave the instrumentation to the choir masters or to the people that are going to sing the songs. And then, the ones you play, written by the Westerners, they make out time to orchestrate. And that's why each time when we refer to orchestration, we think it just has to do with instruments of the orchestra, the way we usually list them. When you're asked to list instruments of the orchestra, you start with um, the, the strings and all the rest of them. We have all these in our culture. We need to explore them. Documentation, we lack documentation of our art. Towards this, we have done a few things to achieve that. In recent times, some of our compositions have been globally performed and used in various guises for different occasions outside the shores of Africa. Some were performed by entirely foreigners while some were by Nigerians and diaspora. As well as examples of such include Onyeji's Inamura and Utumwa. That one went global. Recently, we had the Ubidimba by um, Ekweme, and um, we did Udalam 2, which was performed and recorded in the United States sometime last year. These songs we are considered first due to availability before thinking of usefulness. What we have done to ensure, what have we done to ensure that Igbo art songs are readily available globally? We need to repackage. We have tried to do that, and in some areas we've successfully repackaged Igbo folk songs in two volumes of 10 solos each with piano accompaniment. The books are titled Soloist Companion 1 and 2, which I have done some years back and is servicing several institutions and soloists in Nigeria, Africa, and some countries outside the shores of Africa. Um, another Other such compilations com include Kam Siyonna Dramatic Chorus Book and Sacred Igbo Contemporary Youth Song Series Volumes 1 and 2. Orchestration, I've talked about orchestration. I've looked at orchestration and I came up with something um, where I have tried to give some names to what I have derived from our society. I said that one is Nkwa pattern. The other one is High Life pattern. I called the other one rubber dog pattern. I called ACM pattern. ACM is Anglican Children's Ministry. I called the other one seraphic pattern. If we try to bring them, I had wanted us to do a little practical demonstration of that, a little of it. I know we are running against, um, the time is against us, but let's do a little practical, get a little practical experience of it. And uh, Oh, you've been waiting for that. Jesus. <laughs> Please, let me just have, let me just have senior students in music, just come, not somebody that can read something, you know, little thing online. Please come, I need about four or five persons. The lecturers can come, doesn't matter, just come, come and help me with something. This is not an exam now, come and do something, how about? See, I'm not going to ask questions. Just come and play for me. 
<laughs> okay. The Upa pattern, there it chapter plays a very prominent role in this pattern, and its redemic pattern is synonymous with what with that of the Mkwa group. Um, Okonkwo in 2006 refers to this group as a special traditional gospel band. The group and their style of music oriented from the Living Christ Mission, a Christian religious sect that has its headquarters in Umkwere, Imo State. The following is the rhythm. Hey, this is from the music. Only in the music. Okay, Eba, let's look at that. If, please, please, let's just do something. Aha. The person that this is in attempting to create our own form of orchestration. It doesn't it shouldn't be what the white people you know are doing. And we write our own songs, we've not been able to create patterns. So I've decided to do that and come up with this to give them names that are indigenous so that we can use that as patterns. From there, we now develop orders. I have just five of them. The Ewa plays pa ti ti ti. Okay. Pa ti ti pa 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 pa. Big big pa ti ti pa 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 pa. Ti ti pa ti ti pa pa pa. Continue playing that. Okay, that you play. Pa pa. Kakam. Okay, Kakam. Kokum, yeah. Kokum. Do you have a Okolo? Like I'm skipping it, Chaka. I'm coming to that. Because Chaka plays the fighter role. So I want to do others before I come to Chaka. One, two, three. Cha cha. Koko. 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 Play yours and forget what any other person is playing, my friend. Again, okay, you're not playing what I asked you to play. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, tete. Aha. Allo, do we have Allo there? Oh, my God. Okay, the chaka. Who plays the chaka? Play the chaka. Let's just get what we want there. Cha, cha. One, two, three, four. Cha, 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 cha. Maintain it. If, if we bring all of them together, you will have a feel of the Mkwa group. The next thing you hear now is uh, That kind of thing. Aha. Hold it there, hold it there. So, if, if, if you listen to that, if we develop all of them, ordinarily they will just come and give you that thing I'm talking about that made me call it Nkwa rhythm. That's the pattern. That's number one. The next one is the high life pattern. This took its root from the old Ghanaian high life style of percussion, which manifests conspicuously in the rhythm played by the Okolo. Okay, let's have the Ewa play. One, two, titi koko, one, two, titi koko, titi koko, titi koko. Listen, listen, listen first. Listen first. One, two, titi koko. Titi koko, titi koko, titi koko, titi koko, titi koko, you really, titi koko, titi koko, titi koko, do that. Yes, there. Aha. Okay, now you there. Okay, now. Pam, 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 pam. Chaka, you there? Maintain. Okay. Obokolo goes wait. One, two, three. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Not the obok. Continue, continue. Continue. Wait, don't play us yet. That is the major instrument. Don't play yet. Which other instrument is there? Would you go on? Don't worry. Just give us the pause. Pin. Which other instrument? Okay, don't worry. Let's now go there. You have your instrument. Pa, 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 pa. The 
old Ghanaian tune, if you're used to the high life of old Ghana, you must hear this rhythm. They is a ka, 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 ka. You need Ghana. Da da, mupeme sankuda. Osan beri me, David mupeme sankuda. Mezetuna, hey mupeme sankuda. Meze me yama bekanfo, me yamfo yankupo. Osan beri me, David mupeme sankuda. Hey mo. Thank you. Thank you. Let's do the next. Okay, rubber dub. Rubber dub is simple. When the Nigerian music that I picked rubber dub from the the normal pop music, reggae pop music that was then, when Nigeria was beautiful and we thought we had you know and somebody came out and said under pressure nigeria under pressure we thought we were under pressure actually i don't know what kimono will say now okay so that time we were talking about under pressure at some point you will hear that rubber dog breathing and they get to a place they will say yeah under but you hear ping 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 everybody 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 hits hits that everybody does that be under pressure, Nigeria, under pressure, bam, bam, under pressure, da, ba, da, di, ba, da, 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 that kind of rhythm. So that particular thing, okay, thank you. What I was using that for is a transition. I usually use that if I'm writing, I get to a place where I want to move from maybe a key to another, or I want to move from a particular mood to another. I can use that as bridge passage most times. Okay, that's number three. The fourth one is the ACM pattern. How many of you were in ACM here? Just raise your hand if you have an idea. Okay, now look at it. ACM is Anglican Children's Ministry then. That was APA. If you know what happens, they have a particular style. If you just hear that, you know it is. In fact, what guides us is the Ogene. Hmm? As soon as you hear, Tinkum Koko. This, this as you hear that, it's ACM. Anywhere you hear ting kong koko, kong tun tutu, ting kong koko, kong tun tutu, yeah. Jehovah can get well in a car. Hey, oh, oh, do I, oh, do I, oh, do I, hey. Jehovah can get well in a car. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Otua, 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 hey. Thank you. Now the seraphic, which is the last one in the in the rhythm here i looked at what i saw in cherubim and seraphim church because of music i go to every church room. i go to i belong to everybody i belong to everybody my own to everybody now every church now this is in six eight you'll hear something like Come on. Echaka. Don't play what I've not written. Don't play what I've not written. Alright. Opokolo. Ka 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 
ka ka ka ka ka ka ka ka ka ka ka ka ka ka ka ka ka ka ka ka ka ka ka ka ka ka ka ka ka ka ka ka ka ka ka Alright, if you know the Cherubim Church, if you know the Cherubim Church, if you know the Cherubim Church, they have their songs. It's not they don't sing everything. And that song you must have to give it this way. That clap must be. Talo Tabiwe. Talo Tabiwe. something like like Christmas is approaching you have decked the whole sweet buffs of holy what is falala -la -la? to them it's nonsensical but nabanyo dire we have everything you hear in our music has some sense in it so we believe that so we changed the nonsensical thing to what we call untranslatables or vocables. It is just because they do not have a definite meaning, you know, if you want to bring it to say physical perspective. Those so love so me me. If that me me does not come, you will notice that that song, that melody will be hanging. So it is a completion of that musical phrase. You get there and you end there. So, it's in one of my works, the soloist companion. Response to a call. Adeze, Adeze maka tutugene, Adeze maka tutugene might not mean anything if you look at it, but it is not nonsensical. Ndiibo, tutugene, sometimes here in this context, Adeze maka tutugene can mean you know they think here. Now, kuchiente, kuchiente, totogene. Some persons will say there's another word for it. Yeah, that kind of thing. Uh, so at this point, it is a response, meaningful response. It is not nonsensical. Accompaniment. Sometimes we use that as accompaniment. In some of the songs we do, especially that's my group, the commotion crew. The commotion sometimes when I write songs, especially for for people, if I do something like um, song for the dead and their historical what your biography. Now, when I do such things, at some point when I want to be very solemn, I get it, get it. all those things are tones of musical instruments that we know. So you can do that and they echo that. It can come, you know, grammatically it means something. Exclamations, hey, it will say, all that. They can come under that. Sign of agreement or affirmation. Nda, une, du, mararadu, zamereza, singa, all of them. One day, they come as agreement or relation. You might be saying something. And, and then, lastly, psychological functions. Sometimes we do these things to keep you awake. You know, if I am singing and I give you a response, it is to keep you attentive to what I'm doing and what I'm saying so that you will not maybe sleep while I'm still doing that. We've advocated for balance in curriculum to add Igbo art music as part of curriculum in the work we did. We've tried to formulate indigenous concepts.